Welcome to another episode of Conversations with the Candidates. My name is Kevin Tachi, and the purpose of this particular show is to get you acquainted with folks who are going to be on the ballot, primarily folks who are going to be running in the town election coming up on May 18th, that is the third Saturday in May, uh, and we have candidates who are running for uh, select board and candidates running for school committee. The idea is to help you be better informed with the folks who are running for office and some of the issues that they would look to tackle uh, if they are successful come May 18th. Today we're privileged to be speaking with uh, a candidate who is running for school committee. She is Rosemary Conley. Rosemary. Hi Kevin, how are you? I'm good. Uh, welcome to the program. Tell us, we don't want to assume everybody knows who you are. We know you're very popular. <laughs> but if you will, tell us a little bit about yourself. My name is Rosemary Conley, and I um, have been on your finance committee, or Whitman's finance committee, for some time. Um, if you've been paying attention to the BOS meetings um, early on, you probably recognize me from um, 1999, uh, tw no, 2019's meeting where um, a school committee member is asked, is, are we using statutory by a, a Selectman Lamartina? And I was the one who handed the numbers that showed, no, this is impossible that we're using statutory. So uh, identifying those combined yield efforts and, you know, really, uh, I run every year, as you know, and I run um, basically to get information out to the public, but this time I really am gonna ask to get elected to the seat. I, uh, it's important, there's a lot of changes in the laws that are coming up and it's going to affect these budgets. And you need somebody who knows the laws, you need somebody who knows those combined yields efforts because we have to service both um, the kids and ensure that uh, taxation is something that we can handle. We've got a lot of big things going on. Let's, you, you, I think you kind of touched upon why you decided to run, you say you run every year, the pr previously you've ran for select board. Yep. This is this your first time running for a school committee, or have you run previously? Uh, I have never run for school committee, actually. Okay. Um, regularly, so I, why? Why school committee this time around? That's a great question. Thank you for asking. Um, usually, I run. I I like finance committee. I'm I'm not a political animal so much as to as a hey guy. This the politics are not giving the right numbers or the right information, and the public needs to know. Um, Kathy Otina uh, is running, and I felt like oh okay. We've got that, she's honest, she knows the numbers, she knows the situation. And this budget um, is particularly fragile. Um, we often vote people in because we know them at the playground, or we know something, and, and they are well-intended good people. But if they don't understand the aid, and they don't understand the fluctuation, they don't understand hold harmless, they don't understand these really important things that are shifting and changing, and that can be dangerous financially to these towns if they don't know how to address them or prepare for them. What kind of experience or knowledge do you feel that you would bring to the school committee if you're elected? Um, I, I understand education a lot. My father wrote a lot of education, you know, uh, um, special ed education a lot. I understand circuit breaker, its intent, and what it's meant to prevent. I understand how it's formulated and who it's meant to serve. I understand um, hold harmless and how a town gets in it and how a town gets out of it. I understand its impact. I, uh, I think a few years ago uh, before we started to see the massive decline, I warned people. I said, this is going away and if you've been, you know, there's some indication that they've been dealing with it as, re as, as real revenue uh, when it actually is stabilization aid. Um, I was able to warn, and, and there was some action taken. We got full day pay in, so we got more per pupil amounts to offset the loss. Um, so my knowledge of these things uh, really does help and has helped on the outskirts, but not you know in a public way. But um, busing, identifying that uh, the whole system method, opposed to um, whole bus, 75% was being incorrectly applied. Um, 
you know, and, and it's still, uh, in, you know, needs some tweaking, but um, that happened, that happened first, and then we went into other abstract methods, but that was me. Okay. What do you feel are the public's main concerns when it comes to the town's regional school system? I'm sure you've had a chance to, to talk to voters. You're somebody who uh, is, is savvy when it comes to social media. What do you feel uh, are some of the things that's concerning them? Well, I think a real concern is um, percentage, to tax, uh, percentage of income to taxation, how your taxes increase. Um, I think we have fragile uh, community, financially fa fragile community mem uh, members, and um, I think some of the articles on the upcoming warrant are, are really going to make people happy because my, I think there's also the concern is children, we need to produce uh, a, 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 the next generation to take care of, to be uh, strong and, and know. Um, and be competitive in the world. Uh, so trying to balance both what people can afford and um, and what people need, what children need, and, and I can do that really well. Um, and I think these moves on the, the Board of Sele uh, Assessors are making, um, the age in place best practices um, for taxation um, for seniors, and I think people are gonna be really happy and veterans, disabled veterans. Okay, talk to me about your understanding when it comes to the school budget, how it's funded, and what's more, what needs to be done to consistently provide for the district's educational needs. Okay, so it's funded in a multitude of ways, okay. but uh, primarily it's funded um, with uh, rev uh, taxation um, how, from, our, from our levies. Um, and then it, the, a portion is funded, depending on your wealth index, it's a different amount, but a portion is funded by uh, the state, and that's the Chapter 70 monies. Uh, and and th that Chapter 70 law has changed recently. Um, and a lot of that aid before, you just sort of got it, and you could move it around anywhere you want, and you weren't really required to do a lot of things with it. Um, we also have Title I, uh, that's applied to only certain schools, and uh, that is, uh, federal aid, there's, there's a, a multitude of different ones, but primarily it's, it's taxation and Chapter 70. The changes in Chapter 70 are, uh, are you're kind of seeing this year, right? And I think a real misunderstanding of it was that, oh, they, they kept on these staff members. Well, if you examine the new, each, each year, the new requirements set in, and, and it's gonna go for the next couple of years. And uh, more psych psychological staff was a requirement. ESL staff was a requirement. Uh, so if you got money, it was meant to go somewhere, as in the past it wasn't. So being aware of that is gonna be really key. It, it seems to me that every year there's always the conversation, the, the municipality, they put forth their their budgets. There's a discussion. The finance committee members, like you, who work and, and find out what the departments have and what they what they need, and then we, you know, hear discussions in regards to what will be the annual assessment that will be put forth by the regional school district. Uh, we know that this year, what they're saying is, is it was a lot of folks were assuming that the, the placeholder that the towns would use is five percent. Uh, but the school district has put forth their assessment that was a little greater than that. Each town is going to have to pursue an override. I believe that you're looking at a little bit more than a half a million dollars for Whitman. Give me your thoughts on uh, the, how the assessment works and going for an override to be able to fund education. Well, this, uh, this, uh, that's a, a packed it is. <laughs> question. So I'm going to start with, with the beginning. Um, and, and one of the things I really want to change is how we begin our financial process. The school is supposed to be your first budget. It is always supposed to be your first budget. So that our school bu budget came in last um, is, is unfortunate, but, but they did do a five-year plan, and they did come in lower than that five-year plan, and we were supposed to, on the town level, work with that five-year plan. Um, work with that number that they had. Uh, you're supposed to go and look at the governor's budget in, in January, and you're supposed to see what the instructions are. And in January, the governor's budget was very clear. So leave flexibility in your budget. Basically, 
we're, we're not going to be funding this as well as we have. So we knew in January, and um, we knew that this is the budget that we have to fund. And we, we were aware that in the town level that, um, that the schools used E&D. So we had that lack of flexibility. They used it to reduce taxation the prior year. And so we knew that it had the lack of flexibility. So understanding the aid, you could predict going forward, and you, you also understand, okay, they're going to have to keep these staff because this is got part of that Student Opportunity Act. Understanding the laws that go with these things is really key because you're, you're not using arbitrary amounts, right? And I want to bring up that 5%. I said, we hear that 5% a lot, and we hear the Madden report, and you would swear that on the front cover of that report it says 5%, you know? But if you read that report, that report's about revenue. That report is not a message to the schools. It's a message to the town, increase your revenue. And you can increase your revenue, with a, and I think I, I wrote about this, a revenue portfolio. You could be balancing your grants correctly, particularly capital grants. You could be seeking, um, you could be seeking all kinds of uh, uh, payment in lieu of taxes, you could be renting properties appropriately. And we really need to do a lot of work on the town side. And as a result, I really want to run for school committee because I want to insulate them for that and be prepared to have an honest budget. Remember, this budget, we're, this budget doesn't just affect kids. A lot of people go out there and they say, well, I don't have kids in the system. Well, you have a house, and your house is your biggest mm. equity. And the, the economic engine is that school and the success of the children, the scores, how they do. One of the painful things I heard at school committee this year was um, our school uh, superintendent and um, vice superintendent say, we had settled with just okay, mediocre. But the money came in and these kids are flourishing. Proper funding of schools creates successful students, creates good home values, creates st st stability. Now, I want to I wanna take a misnomer. Some people think, oh, my home value is going up, my taxes go up. If you put an addition on your house and your home value goes up, yeah, you're going to pay because you get something extra. But when the EQV goes up, the, the, the percentage goes down of taxation. It always is, the EQV is always two and a half percent of pass. So you're really not paying more in taxes, but you're gaining a lot in your, your equity, your home equity, which allows you to do a new roof and all those different things. So it's, it's, it's a win-win for the taxpayers. There's a percentage uh, breakdown. I think it's like a, I think it's like a $1,000 for every dollar you invest, essentially, in education. I'll get that, and I'll try to post it up. I think I have. It's a little outdated, but it's even more now. So in a tough budget season, even tougher than we've experienced in the past, um, and you are somebody who is sitting with other school committee members, are there programs, are there programs that you would protect from cuts? Are there things that you would, at all costs, you'd say, no, don't cut this, but yet you may do cuts in other areas? Okay. I think that people need to know that there's a cut coming if we trend at the 5%. For those who don't know, those aren't, who aren't aware, what would that be? Okay. For those, um, one of the things that was said at the, um, the April, I think, 8th uh, school committee before presenting the override was that we have grown as a school. And if you don't understand aid and grants, okay, if you don't understand aids and grants, you would say, wow, we grew as a school. We've got this Panther program. But that Panther program is grant funded. And that's going to be over in two years. And you will have to either cut that program or fill it with revenue. That'll be a program that'll go. And children, children find that's a successful program throughout the state. You know, so that it would be determined by essentially how this program is creating success for the children. And that's, that's how I would determine what, what kind of, is this program successful? It's tough to talk more financial responsibilities knowing that things are kind of tough right now. Mm -hmm. um, 
But the town, not too long ago, approved funding for a new Whitman Middle School, which is That's great okay. news. Mm -hmm. The state is going to assist on this, but the, the Whitman taxpayer is going to be putting the bill on this. Knowing that this is something that's going to be, it was a long-term long problem that is being taken care of now. Looking ahead, what's next? Looking, if you can predict the future, what are some of the things that you, as a candidate, think need to be taken a, take a look at for capital needs for the district, for the, yep. betterment, for the betterment of the school district? Capital, I, I, if I, in the district, there, I think um, there are some updates to Indian Head that we'd, we'd really have to look at. Uh, Indian Head has issues. It's I, I went to Indian Head, <laughs> you know what I mean? and I'm not young, okay. so um, that would be a, a school that I would take a second look at. It's 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 patched together and. Um, How about the Conley? Conley okay? Duval okay? The Duval has issues as well. It's got a roof issue. Um, but we'd have to get really creative. Uh, remember, we, we have limited funds and, and that's sort of, we're pushing that off. We've got the fire department before the fire. That's over 100 years old. We have the senior center. So the, it, it, knowing, that, knowing that I have a really, really broad view and, and a history in the area mm. of all of these buildings, um, and an understanding of finance, um, I, I, I think I offer a unique perspective on how to do this in a, in a holistic way that encompasses all, um, all our st stakeholders, essentially, uh, in the process and provides the proper services without harm. Okay. Um, what challenges do you see the school system facing in the near future and how should the committee address those needs or challenges? One of the things that, that sort of um, surprises me is the idea that you can put a percentile. I mean, so you, you recognize unfunded mandates, and then you say, we're gonna cap this. Um, that, that's, a, that's a process done because somebody isn't putting their school budget first. Hmm. So the first, first challenge is get that get that five year, get the plan set in stone, move forward so that towns can plan for it. Towns can plan for success. Essentially we're in Hold Harmless because we don't provide a product that keeps students there, keeps parents there, keeps families there. And we're gonna have um, a big shift if people accept that MBTA Community Act and we're gonna have to nod and navigate that shift in population. Um, and, and understand how that money goes. So there's a lot of components and a lot of things coming up, changes in laws, changes in demographics, changes in side, but that's also gonna help us be able to pay for things because the more people handling the burden, the more, um, the smaller the burden. It's interesting you brought that up. And it's a, it's a good question, I think, to ask a candidate whether they're running for select board or running for school committee because this overlay district mm -hmm. uh, that the state uh, wants every community, 177 communities, whether you have the commuter rail running through your, your town or city or you're an adjacent community, there has to be uh, development, there has to be some kind of a plan put in place. Does it concern you having that, that again, just because you're, you're creating the zoning, it doesn't mean that you're going to have uh, Developers that are be knocking, beating, you know, beating a path to your door, say, "Oh, we want to develop here." Um, amenities are always king, and depending on where you are placed, and you know, near a main th throughway, is key. But does that concern you as a prospective school committee candidate to see that you may have more more students uh, coming in and increasing the population, knowing that every year there's tough fiscal times? Um. So uh, I think that's something that I offer, that I understand how the aid works and I understand how to best maximize it. And I'm not afraid. Mm. I'm not afraid of um, the changes that are gonna happen. It's a law, and most likely. And developers understand that property near the MBTA sells for more. So you'd probably be smart to develop, right, if you can. Mm. Um, but also, I understand that a town is, um, a town is subsidized for, the, for offsets of their, their budget. 
I feel that finances are cyclical. I think you, some years are up, some years are down. Anybody who knows micro and macroeconomics, you know that if you if you watch the trends. Uh, if we start seeing better times, if you happen to be a member on the school committee, what educational programs do you feel the school uh, school district should offer or seek in the future? I think you just said something really important. Budgets and, and aid and everything fluctuates. That's why the 5% was never in the Madden report. And if you picked it up, you'd see, give me the page. It's not in the page. And that's sort of what key, I, I, something I'll bring is that I read the documents. I read the law. I know it. And those adding programs really in high times, you have to be able to maintain them when money goes down. So really adding programs that are substantive, understanding substantive, making your money count is really it. Because you can have a, a, a big budget or a small budget and still have a lopsided budget. So I would start with the equity aspect of this budget before I started to grow it and start to make sure it is impactful money and review that and then start to roll forward and I'd be working collaboratively with the superintendent and others as well. Okay. As we're, we're kind of uh, coming near a close here, uh, I, I may have, for you, saved the best for last. <laughs> um, is there a question or an issue that we haven't discussed or mentioned uh, that you'd like to speak to for a couple of moments or maybe there's something we talked about earlier on, but maybe you want to expand upon that further. Well, I have something a little fun here. Of course you do. Okay, <laughs> it's a little fun, it's got numbers in it, but sometimes people, say you meet Johnny on the street, or I meet your granddaughter, and I have to say, well, how much have I invested in that child's education, right? Basically, my in that one child's education, if you take out um, basic, our whole amount per child spending, out of just taxation, what you're paying, and remember, it's not just you. Mm. It's also, you know, another 15,000 plus other citizens. It's also large multi-billion dollar companies like that are 504 is like National Grid that are paying their personal property that, you know, millions and millions of dollars going taxation. So that it's shared. So do you know what I paid towards your granddaughter? Do you know what everybody generally, if we were to per capita, break out per capita what we paid for each individual child? Well, I'm sure you're going to share it with us. So. I am. I'm going to start with one school and uh, 71 cents. Well, 71 cents for that child's really foundation of life. And that's the vocational school, the more expensive of the two. 71 cents. And that's, and that's annually? Is that how? how yes. What, what, Really? Remember, we have two th over 2,000 children, or over 3,000 children total in the school, right? Huh. And remember, we have, it's spread out. It, when we're, we're fearing the MBTA Community Act, yeah. remember, we have other offsets. National Grid is going to put in more, more um, lines and things, and they have to pay on that personal property. So then, Whitman Hansen is 56 cents. 56 cents a child. There has never been a better investment than a child, ever, in each other. That is us. That's our future. And uh, I hope everybody sees the, the honor and value in what we pay. Sometimes we, enter, we, we approach things fearfully, but sometimes asking the right questions, thinking, you know, digging in deeper, you see the value. We're worth it. I've done enough of these conversations over the years with, with candidates, and I know that it was a few years ago that the conversations that we were having was, what is, what is the Whitman Hanson Regional School District spending per student? And, and I believe there was a time, and I'm just kind of throwing a number out there, I'm not giving you the actual no, number, okay. but it was somewhere between twelve and thirteen thousand dollars per child and it was seen of the of the three hundred fifty one communities across the commonwealth it was it was down near the bottom do you as a candidate somebody who likes numbers have you had a chance to take a look at where it stands to this date and has it has it changed has it has it increased because of the student opportunity act or has it plummeted there's been a combination of things that have happened one we fixed statutory um, and statutory is a, a combined yield effort wealth model. So um, 
So statutory, fixing statutory does, does help um, make everybody sort of work towards that goal, towards what they can afford. And then the, the uh, COVID happened and the school got an influx of money and we see a lot of success. And, and I wanna congratulate the, the you know, uh, some, some people who really fought to make sure that, that these kids saw that success. But, but it shows that investment in education makes a difference. <laughs> Remember that 56 cents is with the additional. We, are, we climb from the bottom 1% to roughly around 5 to 8%. We're not there yet. But if just that small increment created real gains, what could a real investment do? What could we do together? And, and I hope that people, instead of being angry and scared, recognize that the assessors are now putting forward things that'll protect you if you're a senior and give you opportunity to pull back at equal amounts of your, similar to the investments that you'd have to make in schools. So we have a lot of age in place programs coming, coming through through our current board of assessors and our new assessor who's remarkable. Um, so we have this opportunity without harming people to really move forward and, and, um, and, and not, not aggressively, but, but impactfully and thoughtfully create real change and, and really put forward some really prepared citizens. Okay. Uh, my last question to do, and that is mm -hmm. basically, if folks who are watching this have more questions for you, they want to reach out to you, maybe they want to support your campaign, maybe they just want to ask a couple of questions, what's the best way for them to be able to get in touch with you? Um, I am on Facebook. Uh, it's my Rosemary Romy Conley is my personal. You can you can there because I, I post in both. And then there's Conley for School Committee. Uh, it's a group. You're welcome to join and uh, look at least at the information. Um, you can contact me on Facebook as well. I'm happy to chat. Well, I want to thank you for your time. Thank you. And for the conversation. And I want to thank you, the folks at home, for tuning into conversations like this that uh, WHCA has hosted during this election season using a variety of shows to be able to kind of better inform you about the candidates that are running for office. We hope to have more conversations in the near future. And until the next time, have a great day.